Hello everyone, this is Julie checking in from Julie Loses. It's been a long time since I've done a video post, and to be completely honest, I have shot a couple of videos in the interim, and just never got around to posting them or editing them. Not that I do any editing, but um, I figured I would just come out and say that. So I have definitely still been hanging in there with the program. Um, I am currently, I think, about 13 official weeks into the 2020 Lifestyles program. Now, that includes a three-week downtime when I had some stomach issues, but I, I, I'm I nearing the end of phase one. Well, I'm about seven weeks away from the end of phase one, and I'm down, according to the program, I'm down over uh, I think about 31 pounds, but since August, since I started actually taking an interest in my my eating and nutrition and and weight management, I am down over 40. So go me. Um, today it's Thursday and it's a rest and relaxation day. And when I say that, I mean as much as I want to go out and work out, I really have to take a rest because I've scheduled a massage and a facial as a reward day. So uh, when I lost 26 pounds, the my dietitian gave me a coupon for a free hour-long massage, um, which I've been hanging on to since about mid-December. And I've been looking forward to hitting the official 30 pound mark to get to go ahead and get a facial as well. And I uh, did that last week, and then this week decided to go ahead and, and schedule it in. Now, uh, I've only had a massage for shoulder physical therapy, and I've never actually had a relaxation massage before, so um, I'm a little nervous, but also I'm really looking forward to it because I've been working out a lot. Um, the other thing, I, I worked out with my trainer on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of this week. Uh, three days in a row is not the classic style, but unfortunately my trainer uh, has to reset her visa. She's from Australia and uh, was here for school and then uh, continued on afterwards, but her visa is expiring and she needs to leave the country and get everything reorganized to come back. I'm hoping she comes back. I'm very, very, <laughs> very sad that she is gone. I, I feel that she had uh, enough sway over me to keep me motivated. Um, I did have a substitute at some point when she went out of the country to travel for about a week or two, and I found myself not as motivated during my workouts. I, it, in, I'm trying to think of exactly what it is about her that I think it's because I'm afraid of her a little bit. <laughs> she's she is a college basketball player. She's about six foot one. She she's you know super funny, but also you know doesn't take any bull from me and is always willing to to put the incline up a little bit higher when my heart rate isn't getting up fast enough. And it's not something I would do myself and I have really appreciated all my time with her and I'm really hoping she comes back. If she doesn't, she has um, rescheduled me at least for the time that she's gone with her, a, f a friend of hers who also um, does personal training at the club and she has assured me that I will f have uh, similar good times with this person. So. Um, at minimum, this will mix things up. Uh, mixing things up is always a good thing, so I'm hoping that uh, that will be the case. I I'm nervous, but I am I'm excited. So I kind of zoned out there for the last minute or so with my talking. Maybe I'll edit it out. Maybe I won't. We know me. I'm pretty lazy about that. Um. Anyway. Food is going really well for me. Um, I've been really careful to track everything I eat. I'm tracking it on both the 2020 Lifestyles private tracker 
that the interface uh, that my dietitian and all my other people on the on my team, I guess, have access to an interface with. And I'm also logging on my fitness pal, which I find to be. Uh, I really like the community aspect. I really like getting those likes and comments when I post that I've done a workout or my daily diary of uh, food logging. Um, and and I today I actually got my first. Um, I wouldn't call them critical. I, I would call them comments of concern about my calorie intake. And, um, you know, it looks bad because on my fitness pal, they have a thing called net calories that they show. And basically, so you have your caloric intake from food and then they, you, you also can log your exercise. And I use my, um, DigiFit tracker with my heart rate monitor and that automatically keys into my fitness pal. So if I did 321 calories of exercise, that logs in and subtracts it from my total calories that I have eaten. So yesterday I had about 1,050 calories that I ate. And then there's like that 320 um, calories of ex exercise expenditure. So it shows my net calories as in like the 730s, which seems really, really low. And I agree to a certain extent. Um, again, I'm not a medical professional and I know that there's a lot of things up in the air about, you know, what, what calories really mean. And each one of us is a little bit different in the way we use our calories and the way our, our, you know, system handles sugar and energy and all that. And, um, I, but it's something that concerns me. I am at the low end of the spectrum on caloric intake. Um, I'm also pretty short. I'm just barely five foot two inches. Um, I know that the d program director on all the videos steadfastly states that women should not go under 1200 calories a day. But I'm sitting here at about 1,000 to 1,100, and when I was doing some calorie cycling, after, after I took my break, I was having some trouble getting back on the weight loss bandwagon, basically, where my body was at least, and so my dietitian recommended doing some calorie cycling. I would do one day in the 900s, one day in the 1100s, and that has really worked well for me. I was saying, I was seeing losses of two and a half to three pounds and more a week for several weeks. But it is concerning, you know? I, I read, just like everybody else does, about how, how, you know, you're, you don't want to go too low because it throws your bot, it throws your whole system off and go, you go into starvation mode. And then when you start eating like a, you know, a reasonable human being, <laughs> it can cause problems. So that's a concern of mine. I, I don't want to sacrifice long longevity in my weight loss maintenance for a quicker loss. I mean, that's important to me. I know that my dietitian and everybody on the program, they want to help you maximize your loss, but I also know that it's important for them and their studies that they want to have people maintain this loss for five years and beyond. So it's one of those things where I've, I've brought it up to my dietitian before, and, and frankly, she hasn't really given me any solid feedback on it. She sort of nods and agrees, but there's no, she's never given me, I think, the answer or confident answer that I'm looking for. It's always sort of a, a wait and see. And so the comments I got this morning were that, you know, great healthy choices, but eek, eat more calories. And, and again, you know, I kind of wonder what it would be like if I tried to keep my net calories at 1100 or 1200 for instance um i i haven't i think the last time i did any of those t d e e i i don't know what the uh what the abbreviator acronym stands for at this very moment but it has something to do with you know uh 
how much your body burns in calories every day if you, for instance, are, you know, sitting all day or sleeping. I don't know what it is, but um, you take that as a baseline and then you figure out, okay, if I want to lose two pound, a pound a week, for instance, I have to eat 3,500 calories. I have to, you know, get 3,500 calorie burn off of this. It's... It's really confusing and, you know, a lot of people stress the science of calories it, calories out and the law of thermodynamics and all that stuff. But in reality, we all handle this stuff a little bit differently. We all, you know, if I were to eat, um, you know, 1,200 calories a day and I wasn't focused on what kind of calories... I was ingesting if I was having okay at McDonald's all the time and was eating 1200 maybe I would lose who knows maybe I wouldn't but the fact of the matter is is I wouldn't be giving my body a lot of the nutrients that I'm giving it now and that could contribute to feeling more sluggish that could contribute to not ha being able to maximize my exercise efforts and it could contribute to I'm getting a lot more uh, bad cholesterol, and I'm putting myself at risk for stroke or something like that. So it's really, you know, you have to really look at the big picture on this. And the calories thing is just one of those weird things where I don't know the right answer. So, but I certainly value the comments, and I'm definitely personally concerned uh, because I've read the articles as well and I've read the con you know the some of the literature out there I haven't read it all I'm not a physician but I, I have read enough to know that there's a lot of talk about not going too low with your calories and I've been getting my calories to above a thousand and in the 1100s mostly uh, last week I actually didn't show much of a loss I had 0.8 versus the previous weeks where I had had like 3.6 and 2.5 and all this stuff but so my we were looking at my overall weekly average and it was around 1100 and she's like we'll try to kick that down 100 and I really didn't know what to think about that it's like well what if the on the other hand the other side is true what if my body was kick-started by those lower calories but now it wants to you know, it wants to preserve, it wants to conserve a little bit. And it's, you know, maybe I am in starvation mode. I don't know. You know, it's one of those things. So I'm kind of curious. I sent an email to my dietitian diplomatically asking her to review some of my concerns and maybe talk to my doctor about it and see what happens. Part of me, I mean, I know this sounds kind of selfish, but part of me, it's really from um, a perspective of wanting to be experimental <laughs> with things. I'm kind of curious to see if I were to raise my calories ingested so that my net calories were at, in the 1100s or 1200s, what would that do to my weight loss? It might stall it for a week or two, but long term will I start, will my, if my body's in a s starvation mode now, which I don't know if it's possible, to, I don't know how to tell, maybe they have ways of telling, but if my body's in that mode now, and I get out of that mode, A, how long is that going to take? B, what does that do to my long-term effects? Does that make things much easier? You know, I, I have big fears about staying on these really low calories, and then when we get to some place where I get into a maintenance mode, I start packing on the weight again because my body's like, woo, yay, we're eating like 1,500 calories a day now. Let's keep it. But who knows? I, I mean, I'm really putting myself in the hands of the professionals I'm try while trying to advocate for myself. And it's because the science, because there's so many people telling you there's so many ways to do it, and I know... A lot of people find success in a lot of different ways. But I also know that it's so hard to maintain. It's it's one of the hardest things. And, and, you know, the studies, nobody has figured out the magic bullet 
the, I mean, I don't think there is a magic bullet, but no one has figured out really the, the general rule for, for long-term weight loss maintenance after losing a considerable amount of weight, after being overweight for a really long time. People talk about weight loss surgery, but there is a growing number of people who, who it backfires on. And they end up gaining all the weight back, and then they have permanent internal damage to their organ organs while struggling with this weight, and it leaves them even more dejected and maybe in a metabo you know, metabolically more dangerous place. You got people who are on, you know, calorie restriction diets, or they go, they have exercise, and you know, maintenance is a really tough, tough thing. And I don't want to make it impossible for myself. I don't want to make it unsustainable. Do I feel like what I'm eating now is unsustainable for the long term? That's a good question. Um, I don't know. I mean, I don't really feel terribly deprived. I feel like I'm focused enough about getting enough fat in and enough carbohydrates in and, you know, really trying to keep my protein levels high up there that I don't have a whole lot of hunger. Occasionally, on like yesterday at the end of the day, when I was done and got up to 1,050 and was like, okay, this is one of my 1,000 days, I'm done. Afterwards, I felt like, man, I don't feel like I had enough food. I don't feel, I don't feel like I had enough food, but I, I dealt with it. I just drank more water and was done. Um, but, you know, and I'm able to eat things in moderation. I was able to have this pizza the other day. I had a pizza. It was a chicken vegetable pizza at the bistro at the club. Um, when I refer to the club, I'm referring to the Pro Sports Club, which is a just a premier uh, gym facility that also, you know, hosts this 2020 Lifestyles program. And they have a full service restaurant on site and they have a menu specifically for clients of the 2020 program in the various stages. And I was able to have a whole wheat crust thin pizza with cheese and chicken and a little bit of sauce and like spinach and onions and pepper. It was, it was so good. And it was so good that I planned a, a weekend out of it. I was like, okay, we haven't gone to the movies very much lately, me and my partner, Eric, because we would usually pair it with a lunch outing. And that would be at a, at a place near the theater. And we would have a nice lunch either before or after. But we haven't been able to do that because I've been on this program and I'm kind of, I've kind of been a little scared to venture out onto the restaurant scene. I'm actually working on that with my dietitian. I have homework this week to investigate some menus from a steakhouse. And then to, I think the net following week, I'll actually be going and ordering. And um, so there is, they do contend with that. They're not leaving that out of the equation. But, um, you know, I'm kind of nervous at this point. So we haven't really gone to the movie theaters. But I was like, you know what? We can go to the bistro. It's open on Saturday. We will go there. We will eat lunch. We will go to the movies. We'll have a nice, you know, we'll see a nice long movie, The Hobbit. And then I'm going to get some frozen yogurt. And... Eric can go to a brewery. I will eat my frozen yogurt while he's at the brewery and I don't drink so it's easy enough for me. Everybody wins. Everyone gets what they want. I don't particularly want to see The Hobbit but I will see it in theaters for him. Um, anyway, getting back to it. I had pizza and I'm able to eat Mexican food or food with Mexican flair uh, regularly which for me is a big part of my you know, food identity. I love Mexican food and I'm able to get it and I'm able to eat fat-free sour cream and it gives me the same feeling of satisfaction that any full-fat sour cream ever gave me and I'm able to do it in a way that's balanced and and I see that as sustainable. I do. Um, but sometimes you feel like you're sacrificing and I think most of that is is in terms of the social social festivities. You know, you're not able to, you know, I didn't really have a Thanksgiving meal this year. And, you know, I don't really go out regularly with Eric to restaurants at this point. Um, but 
maybe that's because on my journey so far, I haven't felt comfortable. And my computer just went black, so I had to re-log. Sorry about that. Um, so I'm moving along. Everything's Everything ta is taking time, but I got 32 weeks on this program in total. I've got 20 weeks of phase one and 12 weeks of phase two. Phase two, they're gonna reduce the amount of support. So instead of three visits with my trainer every week, I'm gonna have two visits. And instead of a visit with my dietitian every week, I'm gonna have one every other week. However, I think I'm gonna take, uh, my insurance offers me visits to see um, a nutritional counselor because I do, I was classified with having uh, binge eating disorder and I, I, so I, I do have sort of prophylactic uh, appointments available for me for that. And I had met with a nutritional counselor and I think I'm going to use her as a, as a buffer during that phase two to help because I'm not meeting with the dietitian necessarily every week, but I will be able to get some food support in that arena. So um, that's how I'm going to manage that. I'm thinking ahead. I'm thinking out loud. I, I never really have an agenda on these things. Uh, I just want to kind of tell you where I am in my head to kind of log it. And I hope you, I don't know if you noticed, but I, I feel like I'm thinner on this, on this uh, camera than I have been previously. I'm excited about that. So it's 10.43 a.m. I have to finish my smoothie. I have to go take a shower and get ready for my massage, which is at 12.45. I'm super excited about that. It's my first massage. I'm um, throwing caution to the wind, and I'm just going to do it. Oh, let me backtrack real quick. I want to share a couple really solid um, steps forward, basically. Okay, so my New Year's resolution was to get back in the pool. Uh, I love being in the water. I love the ocean. I love pools, certain kind of pools. I don't like shady pools. It's one of my irrational fears, but we can talk about that later. I, I love pools. I just hate the idea of being in a public pool with other people seeing me in swim clothes. So I don't do it. So this year, my New Year's resolution, I tried to use a SMART goal, which is that um, specific, measurable, attainable, uh, the T is time or realistic maybe, and then time sensitive. So I tried to use that and not create some vague, you know, I know a lot of people say, oh, I'm going to work out more this year, or either they said it too vague or they, they make it unattainable. I'm going to go to the gym five days a week and work out for an hour a day. Now, my goal this year was to get in the pool at the pro sports club and I set myself up. I, I realized that I had certain barriers to that. What were my barriers? My barriers were swim clothes. Well, I have some old swim clothes. I didn't know if they fit. Okay. I went and got swim clothes. Other barrier was I didn't be want to be walking around the gym with no shoes on or some old flip flops that we have in the backyard that we use when we take the dog outside. Uh, so I went out and I got some flip-flops and I was a little intimidated because the gym has about four or five different pool areas and there is etiquette that goes along with all of them. So I decided to book myself a swim lesson and I was also, the gym towels are very small and I wanted to be able to cover myself up. So I bought some extra giant towels that would wrap around my body and cover me up and provide me with a little bit of modesty. I also didn't, I don't like changing in the gym locker rooms. Again, that modesty factor comes in. So I scouted out the shower area a little more closely and found out that I could, I could get in to the shower, change out of my clothes, take a shower, get into my swim clothes, get in the get everything organized in the privacy of a private shower area for me. So that worked out well. So I figured, okay, I've got this all lined up. Uh, and I booked myself a swim lesson. This transpired last Sunday and it was an hour long. 
I didn't get a whole lot out of the lesson, frankly, other than it got me in the pool. <laughs> so resolution achieved. Points for me. Um, and she gave me some feedback about comfort in the water in terms of, you know, I'm not comfortable blowing bubbles out of my nose underwater. And for some reason that's important. So she wants me to work on that. So I figured, okay, maybe once a week I would get in the pool, but Tuesday, I packed all my gear up because I knew I was going to be at the gym all day because I have my dietitian appointment, a personal training appointment, a counseling appointment, and a support group all on the same day. And I figured, okay, I've got about three hours of downtime during that and I can get into the pool. And I did it. I spent an hour in the lap pool, like freaking doing the saddest doggy paddle ever, but I had a heart rate monitor on, I had my polar watch on and it was like 250 calories of energy expenditure so that was a good thing and I feel a lot more comfortable and I feel a lot more confident that I'm going to be going on a regular basis so that was a really really big deal for me and I want to celebrate that <laughs> as my victory for this early part of the year um, so that's that's all I can remember right now and and uh I think I'm doing really, really well. <sighs> I just remember the other thing. So I was having kind of a bit of a struggle with um, my mirror identity, I guess. Um, I knew that there were some... I don't interact with a lot of people. I'm kind of a homebody and I'm not working right now. So really, Eric, my partner, is the only one who... And the people at the gym, obviously, are the only people who give me any real feedback about how I'm looking, if I'm losing any weight, and and Eric's very supportive in that front, but um, I don't see it a lot. I think I'm very hypercritical about that sort of thing, and, and, you know, they took pictures of me at the beginning on phase one, and they were going to take um, pictures again at the end of phase one, but that's, you know, that's many weeks away. So I was like, can you guys take a picture of me now? So mid-December, um, or late December, I asked if they could take other pictures of me, and then I could put them up side by side, and I'll post them here to the blog. And that gives me something concrete that I can look at and say, this was me when I started, and this is me now. And, you know, there are a lot of changes, and there's part of me that's very critical that says, oh, the changes aren't, like what you see for all these other people, but I'm only like a little past a third of the way done. I've got a long way to go and I've done a really good job. I'm I'm swimming in t-shirts now. Um, I had pants that I put on after I went swimming on Sunday that basically fell down. I put on, a, I, I, I packed a pair of black slacks that used to be very tight on me and they literally fell down at home when I was carrying groceries. Uh, through the kitchen and I had to put them down and pull the pull the pants back up. So I mean I am dropping in size. I'm shrinking slightly and, and that's good. Uh, I My goal is to be lighter and lither and more healthy and, and have more energy and be able to do more things and all that is happening. So I just need to stick with it, be responsible advocate for myself, you know, keep my head screwed on straight and and not get too bogged down in some of the obsessive specifics that one can and, and I'm gonna be able to do this. There are definitely challenges, but I'm, I'm definitely reaping some of the benefits right now. So uh, until next time, thank you for watching and I will see you later. Take care.